going to make this one just a few minutes after the last one. But these little updates are going up, you know, right up the day I make these. And I was thinking, I'm still praying this morning. <coughs> and then I had a few more thoughts I wanted to share and give ideas. I was thinking, what is recovery? What is recovery? You know, when Pops uh, was living in his beat-up apartment, which is, was in very bad shape, and you all saw his apartment on the videos, but Pops took care of, like, uh, like a nephew, uh, Charlie Boy, who died, who was an alcoholic who lived with Pops, was like a nephew, and Pops did help him. He didn't have to help Charlie, but he did. So Pops does have a good heart, even though, I think because of his age, sometimes he might do things that might, you know, be not little things. But when Charlie Boy died... Pops had one of the girls that Charlie was with on and off. Her name was Christine, and you saw Christine on the videos. I'm sure Christine was using, and I kind of think maybe she was using heroin, Christine. She was originally from uh, the Boston area and wound up here in Texas, and so we even talked about the Northeast and all. But I remember when I went to see Pops the last few days before he was still in the hospital before he went to that senior center he's in right now. And, of course, Christine was still in that beat-up apartment. And I was learning the story of what was happening, you know. And basically, the people that run the apartment, an older lady owns those apartments. And she told Christine, you know, you got to move out. And I remember one day when I visited Christine, she said, Oh, Preacher John, they're telling me i got to leave. And she says to me, she says, You know, I have friends of mine, John. I don't do this, but sometimes they just keep staying, like in apartments or rentals. I don't know how many of you are familiar with that. And she says, and you know, they have to go through, you know, eviction notices and all. And Christine, uh, Pop's roommate, was saying, and you know, they can just keep staying and not have to pay for many months. But I don't do that, John. I've had friends that also in the whole, when I talk about the recovery and all, and a lot of the people I used to see in the AA and all, and I noticed many, some have, they're grateful that they overcame their addiction. And I used to say a lot, recovery means ultimately living a responsible life. And, and a lot of the friends I saw, maybe they got the good victory over their drug addictions. But they were not. They were either trying to still cut corners, uh, stay in different places. Uh, you know, they still had that take advantage mentality. Uh, cheating, getting money, just the scheming mind. And But many of them were the, like very well known in, in the AA circuits, you know, like. And I would think, I would often say, you know, that's not recovery. Recovery is not simply overcoming a substance addiction. That substance addiction for all those years repressed your your growth in life, your maturity. All of us, I'm sure it did with me, and the alcoholism I had. I said, and so recovery is, you know, you learn to, you don't like Christine, Pop's roommate. And she wasn't claiming in recovery. She was denying she was a user, but me and Pops knew she was using. And so you don't think along those lines, you know. And in her case, Christine, she wanted to maybe, like, hang out there and make the landlady, who was an older lady, and had children living there with her. She owned those little beat-up apartments. And I could see that the family members she also had had relationships, there was alcoholism, drugs involved. So that lady probably was in over her head trying to get rent for those apartments. And nice lady, I think they would like it if I, you know, continued going by there. But Pops ain't there, I, pro I won't go by them. So instead of maybe Pops' roommate thinking, oh, I'm going to make that lady have to force me out and 
she'll and I'll have to stay here not seeing in her mind. You know, you're robbing from that lady when you do that. That older lady that owns those apartments. And she already is behind on taxes on those properties. And But the mind of the addict doesn't think that. The mind of the addict thinks, oh, I can get away with even those that are claiming recovery. And that's why I say that's not recovery. That's not. That's not. And some of my friends who have stopped using, uh, just that I'm familiar with for years now, but yet they had all, and I would say, but these other things that are going on and financial things and getting money, and I said, you know, God can't bless all that. So, and, and, and sometimes these were the same ones that would be talking about, you know, honesty in a certain program. And I was, that's not honesty. You know, you're, that's not honesty. You're robbing from those people when you do those things, besides actual friends that robbed over the years. And I also knew that AA had the principle of, which is biblical, which is restitution, which is you try to make things right. And I had some friends that, this is not to put guilt trips on any of these guys, but they did robberies, actual robberies. And at times, you know, people that got robbed from, in my case, once my daughter had her whole IDs and credit cards stolen, and I, I never found out exactly who it was, but I think I knew. And, but it puts people, and she, had a, she was working and then she didn't have that. And, and a lot of times... If, if you were living that lifestyle and you were an addict and now you're happy that you recovered, you, you should go pay those people back. And I've heard people say, well, you know, my restitution is I'm just going to do good from now on. I understand. But you might have really put stumbling blocks in other people's lives. And I remember once uh, one of the people that knew the person who stole my daughter's stuff a couple years ago said, uh, John, the reason, and this other person that said it was a girl actually, and she, who is also an addict in using, she said sometimes they do those things because and they don't want others to succeed. And I didn't know if it was for that reason because the person that we thought stole my daughter's stuff had a history of ID theft. But I wanted you to see that too because even in that little incident with Christina Pops, she was already going down that like thought pattern of, well, I'll just stay and they can't make me and they got to go through pro. And I always felt like, you know, the things you see, you have in your life as a person, and if you're into recovery and you want recovery and you want, the things you do in your life, don't, um, a lot of times addicts would think that the resources that others have that might even be helping them with, they begin taking ownership like they don't see. In my sister's case for many years, living with my mother, you know, and she'd berate my mom. She'd blame my mom. It's very, very, my, my mom's mother, who is my grandmother, I got a picture of her up here on the wall. I put them up the other day. She's right there. This is my, I don't know if you could see it. That's a picture of my father on the right. In the middle is my grandmother, Sophie, who's died. And on the left is my grandfather, Vito. They were Sophie and Vito Saletti. They were nice. And they came to visit us in Texas when I came. And my grandfather, Vito, was a real liberal. Liberal of the liberals. And he liked, when he first listened to my little meetings I did, because he wasn't so much into religion, but he would hear me speak right in the early days when I did that little home church in Kingsville. And he'd say, John, you know, do you ever think of becoming a politician? Because he saw I was, I always spoke kind of off the cuff, even when I preached from the pulpit type thing. And it was nice that he used to visit me in Texas. But my mother, living in New Jersey, and then eventually when they got divorced, my mother and father, she always wanted her parents, Vito and Sophie, 
to go back to New Jersey because they used to live in Secaucus and uh, Brooklyn and they were, you know, some of the original people living in that part of the country and my grandfather, who was an upholsterer, did, made furniture and eventually he retired and went to Florida. A lot of people did that back in those days from New Jersey and New York area. But she always wanted them to come back and stay. Just She wanted her parents. They did. My grandfather and grandmother actually moved back to New Jersey after all those years. And they fixed up the little garage and made it into an apartment. But my grandmother was sick. And she passed away not too long after that. And, and in the arguments that my sister would have with my mother, and this is how addiction was, she would say, you killed your mother. My sister would tell my mother, you killed your mother by making your mother move here. You're responsible for the death of your mother. You couldn't even keep your husband, my father, married to you, because my sister would say to my mom, and you lived here and you don't know, and all you have this house to my mom is because you never worked for it. And she got it when they got divorced. My mom got that house and father moved on. But my sister would do that day after day after day. You killed your mother. You couldn't even keep a husband. Yet day after day after day. And, they were, and that was just a little bit. There were times where I was there over the years, and my sister had a downstairs apartment. And she had a phone where she could call upstairs. And I remember seeing over the years that I'd be there with my mom. I'd argue with my sister at times. But she'd call upstairs, and my mom, and I was there. But sometimes I don't even know if she realized and when that phone rang, my mom would curse, anger, because she knew she was being intimidated by my sister. And then when she'd pick up the phone, she said, yes, Laura, and my sister, whatever it was, she wanted my mom to go do something or whatever, and she, I'll try, I'll try. And my mom was intimidated because she was afraid of a five, six, seven hour nonstop berating of her. So it wasn't the physical violence in that case. It was the fear of, oh no, the constant berating. You killed your mother. You couldn't keep a husband. You don't deserve to. So in order to not have to go through hours of that daily, she would, and, and before she picked up that phone, my sister was calling from downstairs, she would be ranting in a rage, my mother, cursing. And then get the phone. Yes, Laura, what is it now? Years of this, years of this. I love my sister who is not, she died. But the addict, the mind, it, it's manipulative to get what it wants. And it, it doesn't see a responsible lifestyle. And when I did the little bit of the AA, and I saw people that were very happy, that they overcame maybe their heroin addiction or whatever, but they still had a whole manipulative life, which always involves taking from other people what is not rightfully yours. And you can gain that through manipulation. And I, it, that always bugged me, because some of the same people would be talking about honesty and some of the steps of restitution, and I said they're, they're practicing... They're continuing to practice the mind of an addict through manipulation, through taking ownership, whether it's Pop's roommate that didn't want to move out and did not see anything wrong with having to force that old lady who owns those apartments, even though she's already in debt and can't pay the taxes on the property. But the mind of the addict isn't. It's wrong for me to steal from that lady by making her force me to leave. And the mind of the addict is I'm just... I want to go do my using somewhere, and whatever would interfere with my using, in, in that Christine's case. So, that was also processes of me, my experience growing up, and seeing a lot of that.
that I, I kind of see writing on the wall and it was not, you know, try to explain in home situations that I'm not going to be in a situation where maybe someone's afraid to say, no, no, we have to, this can't go on here. No, no, I don't want to, you know, say anything. And I said, I said, I, I, I grew up in this. And I said, but that I won't live like that. And I never wanted to be real forceful in the sense of, look, we'll settle affairs. And, but no, I'm not going to go on in a long lifestyle in that manipulation. And so I hate that it, those things sometimes happen, but uh, we will do what we got to do. I had this yard fixed up for my time to pray. And I love my prayer spot. And I have all those little granite things. And this is... This place was a place of rest for me, here, peace and prayer. And I don't want to be thrust into having to, you know, you shouldn't have to. So I want you to see that too, okay? I'll do this as also today's update. I'll do this on all of them. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee. Give thee peace.